we were talking about uh, the distributed system uh, in this distributed system we were seeing we have seen that uh, remote invocation remote method invocation we have uh, started remote method uh, invocation which is a little uh, different from rpc some benefits uh, sorry uh, some similarity and a few um, advantages and then we are seeing this object model where uh, we understand that uh, this objects all the objects have object references and also we are able to use interfaces in object model where we used to define some set of methods uh, that can be used by uh, other um, classes other objects let me say okay now uh, other than that uh, when we talk about uh, uh, rmi definitely it will be a distributed uh, system but uh, one thing that we understand is uh, whenever we have an object oriented system in this object oriented programming the objects can invoke the methods okay also we understand that ob methods of one object can um, invoke the methods of another object till the extent the ob all the objects are in the same process okay that was the story of normal object oriented programming where an object a method of object a can call or invoke the method of another object b until uh, till these objects are in the same process right now in this distributed system we are talking about that these objects can be in a different processes as well so for that purpose we will need rmi remote method invocation some kind of a specialized software that could help us in invoking the methods of the objects which are in uh, different process now in object model we have also a concept of um, showing errors we call it exceptions these exceptions uh, whenever they have they they are we need to deal with them uh, there are certain uh, ways like uh, those uh, methods which can uh, throw the exceptions which can uh, uh, there are possibility of errors we uh, specify those uh, um, blocks of code as uh, showing by a throw keyword it is in java or in c++ as well so we specify that these are the code which throws the exception and accordingly at certain places where we use these methods we need to catch uh, uh, the exception we used to specify the code in the block of try and catch kind of thing so similar things in distributed system also we have to keep in mind that uh, whenever a method is being called there are possibilities of this particular um, exceptions so um, okay i will come to this again before that uh, uh, let me tell you about garbage collection we have already seen uh, that what happens in garbage collection there are certain objects which are no longer needed now so there is automatic procedure uh, especially in java uh, you know that it can uh, free the particular space in the memory and uh, remove the objects from the memory so these all the concepts we have to understand how uh, it is uh, similar or little different from normal behavior of object oriented programming in case of distributed system so in distributed system now we will have the objects which are distributed among the processes these processes may be running on a computer or on a different computer on a remote uh, place we have also to understand one thing what is remote method invocation we understand it as uh, there are two processes or uh, yeah definitely let me take only two processes suppose mm, this is not working so there are okay uh, i will say like that only that there are two processes processes 
suppose uh, the process this one and this process this one come on so this is process p1 and this is process p2 and there are objects o1 and object o2 here actually okay uh, i was talking about distributed objects i don't know i was talking about garbage collection what i was talking about rmi hmm? rmi yeah i was talking about rmi so what i am saying is uh, there are two processes p1 and p2 so this object has a method different uh, every object has a state you may understand that these instance variables are there these variables have some value that will represent the state of an object and along with the state they have certain methods which can execute now one of the method of a one, uh, of a object has invoked a method of this particular object o2 okay now if another object is o3 its own method can be called from here no problem in the same process in the same process you have this object and this object also so in the same process um, if this particular method is being called of object o3 then it will be a local invocation and local invocation has no complexity okay however now we are going to talk about distributed system in distributed system basically these processes will be uh, there will be multiple processes running maybe on a same computer or on different so i was telling you about remote invo remote method invocation that a method of object o2 is being called being invoked from an object of uh, process p1 okay so here you can see these processes are different whether these processes are on the same system or on different it doesn't matter since the processes are different the objects are in different processes the client object i should say and the server object i should say these client object and server objects are in different processes because of that we say this invocation as remote invocation remote invocation now also let me tell you that this is the uh, object which allows let me repeat this is the object which allows remote invocation so such objects can be called as remote objects okay so these method uh, sorry these objects actually have used or have published their uh, interface okay an interface is specifying that these are the methods which can be called from anywhere so such objects will be called as remote objects now those objects which have specified that they are remote object means who have specified their interface to be called from somewhere they are remote objects other than uh, these such objects all the objects including them also all the objects allow the local invocations okay so they can always receive all the objects i should say all the objects can always receive local invocations 
but one thing that uh, whoever will uh, send a local invocation they must have the reference of this particular object okay so that is the thing we have understood uh, here uh, uh, considering the distributed objects that uh, mm, okay here we were trying to understand uh, the local and remote invocation that uh, one object here is making a, a remote invocation to this particular object and this particular object can make a local invocation or uh, another uh, remote method invocation. So, these all the things are possible. We also understood that uh, there will be client server architecture they may follow these uh, what we call it objects for communication they can follow. We also understood because of these features a uh, better way we call it encapsulation. Encapsulation is easily implemented. Encapsulation is easily implemented means encapsulation is a way that uh, you are allowing others to access the state of the data means the variables of the data only through the methods. No one can access the data, no one can access these variables independently without using the methods. Whenever you have to use this, you will have to use the method. So, these details, these access rights of these things are uh, hidden from the outer world. Although these methods, the, uh, the method of the objects can easily access this, uh, the state. So, two important things uh, uh, here in uh, remote object, okay, uh, this thing, uh, distributed object model is uh, remote object reference and uh, remote interfaces. What was remote object reference? that uh, as I told all the objects will have uh, its own reference and whenever an object suppose A wants to invoke a method of B then A should hold the reference of B. Now all the object will have their own reference one complexity here arises in case of distributed model that these objects which are running in different processes how to manage a global identifier for all these objects okay since object a is in process p1 object b is in process p2 and object c is in process p3 in that case, if we are not able to manage global identifier, global reference for the object, in that case, it may be possible that whatever uh, some object here in process P1 has an object reference same or uh, similar to some objects in P2 okay? and if the object reference of two objects uh, are same in that case there will be ambiguity in calling the uh, or invoking the methods of object. So, as we understand the name of something in a system should be unique. So, object reference is that particular thing only that it should be unique. If at all it had been a single process, then it should be uh, unique in the same process. However, if we are talking about distributed system, then it should be unique in the whole system. So, how to manage these things? We will have to understand. Uh, we will see how RMI software helps us in, in 
uh, obtaining this uh, objective. Another thing is a remote interface that these objects should uh, publish a uh, remote interface which is specifies which of its methods can be invoked uh, remotely so that uh, the other methods uh, method A could invoke the methods sorry the methods of uh, object A could invoke the methods of object B. So, this is the case uh, the two important thing remote object reference and remote interface. Now, we have also understood that whenever uh, something uh, some method is involved some actions do take place. Okay. So, let us talk about the actions uh, uh, performed in distributed uh, object system. Okay. So, if it was a non distributed uh, system, what happened? Whenever a method is invoked, some uh, operations are done um, and the result is provided, or this method can invoke some other method and some results may be received and uh, results may be prepared and um, it may be returned. But in case of this distributed uh, system, what will happen? Now, one object you can see here, one object A is calling uh, B and B in turn is calling another and this another is calling in turn to C, right. So, you can call it as a chain of related invocations, right. Now, this chain of uh, uh, invocation is not on the same process you know? this may be on different processes right or maybe different computers also so whenever this invocation is crossing the boundary of a process moving from uh, this process p1 to p2 or p2 to p3 in that case you will need a RMI software. Okay. Then you are needing uh, RMI software. Now, here actually you have to understand that you will have to manage the reference of the object. Hannah? The reference of the object B should be available to A. Now, if uh, the objects would have been in the same process, then it would be easily available. However, now what is happening? This object is in a different process, but still it would be having some reference through which A can access. So, its address or reference should be available to the object A. So, how to obtain such kind of um, uh, reference? Hannah, these for this purpose, this RMI software will help you. So, these references may you may get at the time of instantiation a new object is instantiated then it will return its address and it can be saved somewhere to uh, access it hello okay one more thing uh, when uh, just now i will tell you about implementation of rmi i will tell you about uh, uh, certain modules there will be remote reference module where um, it will there will be also a proxy kind of thing here which will help us in managing the um, re remote references so here also what actions are taken using these references uh, um, request reply is managed when the with the request reply you get the uh, operation to be performed this operation is performed on the uh, server side and the result is um, marshaled uh, and sent back to the um, calling object 
invoker as a message. Also, if you want to implement a garbage collection here in case of distributed system, what you can do? First of all, you should be aware that uh, the process running here is the one which supports garbage collection. Suppose all these are in Java, in that case you can easily implement distributed garbage collection. Like here, uh, if at all it is Java, it will already be running a garbage collection, no problem. If you are uh, thinking about a distributed garbage collection, in that case, all these should support uh, garbage collection. And then there could be a central mod module somewhere on any one of the process, which could manage the garbage collection of the objects on all these processes, on all these systems. Okay? So, in that way a distributed um, garbage collection can be implemented and similarly exceptions can also be handled that the you know, whenever certain um, request is being made some objects are there their own errors are possible other than these errors uh, a new kind of error is possible that uh, the object uh, has uh, is no, no longer available or object has uh, crashed or maybe it is too busy in helping in uh, helping I should say I mean uh, in replying to other uh, requests. So, in that case also the uh, reply may not come on time. So, in those cases also um, uh, such exception or errors may be there at the uh, invoker side. So, keeping these things in mind. Uh, we have to uh, try to understand the implementation of RMI. Okay. Let us uh, see the implementation of RMI. So, now let me uh, draw this first. This is your uh, client side and this is your server side. So, you know that for communication you need a communication module on both side. Okay. These are communication module. Can somebody tell me what is the purpose of communication module? Hmm? Okay. Suppose it is client to server, so it will uh, marshal the request and uh, send it. Marshalling will involve assembling some of the things. What are the things it will need to assemble? It will need to assemble a few things as we have seen. It will uh, need the um, object identifier, it will need the operation identifier, it will need the arguments needed to uh, execute the operation, right. So, it will uh, assemble all of them, we, uh, we call this assembly as marshalling and uh, send it as a request at the and here on this side server, uh, it may be unmarshaled and uh, other things can be done. And after when a reply is prepared, it can be reply can be marshaled again and sent back to the um, client. Uh, so, these are the things uh, communication module which will be available for client and server as well. Let me say that uh, there is a object A here.
okay and here uh, we have our object b okay object b is the um, uh, remote object let me write it as a remote object b hello so remote object b is something uh, is a object which has published its interface through which it can be accessed and so uh, you can also call this uh, object as servant okay now other than the um, these objects there are some more things that are needed one thing let me call it as uh, remote reference module okay one piece of code is called remote reference module this will be on both the sides okay it is remote reference module so on the client side let me uh, tell you we have a proxy okay let me call it as a proxy for b okay and on this side on server side you will have a dispatcher as well as a skeleton dispatcher and skeleton for b or b's class okay now you already understand the purpose of object a this is the object which will have a method which will invoke the object of ob, no, sorry method of object b now when it invokes it doesn't know the uh, real address of object b so this is a module remote reference module which will help us in recognizing or generating reference uh, address reference of the objects for this purpose this proxy for b will also help us what this proxy does proxy actually maintains a static table okay in this table it maintains the object references okay whatever uh, it issues a call a invocation so it has uh, an entry for all the uh, remote objects whether it be remote object b remote object c or other objects okay so these addresses it will store now uh, acha uh, also it may store uh, the addresses for other local proxies also okay now so okay so what have we stored here the reference of all the objects so it says that it wants to call a function of class b uh, of object b a method of object b in that case this remote reference module uses this proxy with this uh, static table and finds out the exact reference of this particular object b and then this reference to object b is used and uh, along with the 
um, operation identify it is marshaled with the argument and then it is sent as a request now as it is being received on this side it is unmarshaled then we recognize that um, what do we have here so we recognize that uh, we have uh, um, this particular uh, object b for which the request has come so yes b is a remote object we did we recognized now this b is a object for this b we have a dispatcher and a skeleton okay so what this um, dispatcher is done uh, so what this dispatcher will do see for this uh, remote object b we have a dispatcher and a skeleton for b for other objects remote objects if at all they would be we will have a separate dispatcher and a skeleton for those remote objects as well now we have received a request message hai na now what we have to do from this message we have uh, recognized which operation uh, is to be performed so there is a operation id accordingly this dispatcher will uh, see the skeleton okay in this skeleton actually we have the um, definition of these operations these methods okay so this dispatcher what it does gets the operation id and accordingly finds out um, uh, what operation is to be performed and uh, it's it finds out uh, um, the appropriate method in the skeleton and uh, passes this request to a skeleton basically that uh, these are something that you have to execute <coughs> okay you can also understand this dispatcher is something like a proxy on this server side okay but what it does it just uh, maps um, the correct uh, maps the request to the correct portion of code where it has to execute okay now if we talk about uh, skeleton uh, some more what i can tell you is uh, here the methods have been implemented hai na the code the actual codes are written for those methods and whenever these requests are coming according to the operations identified these methods can be executed along with the particular uh, um, what we call it uh, uh, arguments uh, then what is happening um, whatever the results are coming these results will be marshaled again and a reply message will be packed i should say and then it is sent for sending again uh, this kind of things if the reference is available or remote uh, reference module can be used if at all proxy is needed proxy can also be there it can be used and then a reply can be sent this is the way how rmi is uh, implemented so these are certain things in rmi if uh, uh, one more thing i have to tell you is uh, that in proxy here as you can see these proxy are having a static table you are managing uh, what uh, are the reference right in place of having this kind of uh, uh, a static thing you can also have a dynamic um, in that case you will not call it uh, proxy you will call it as a dynamic invocation so dynamic invocations are also possible so what happens in dynamic invocation these clients can access uh, um, to the global representation there will be a global representation for this uh, methods so 
in that case you will not need such a static proxy using this global representation of these methods you can directly access these methods and uh, operate it means use the op methods of the particular remote object so uh, these are the few things related to rmi any confusion anything that you want to ask